Hi everyone, this is Jackie at Hub City Bookshop and this is Margo also at Hub City Bookshop. And we are super excited to welcome um, Cookie O'Gorman and uh, Molly E. Lee tonight. And we're gonna be talking about Cookie's lovely book, um, Cupcake. And she was gracious enough to send us these little matching books and beautiful signed book plates. And they have actually notes on them too. So beautiful, um, check those out for sure. Um, if you haven't bought one yet, there's this handy little link here to buy a copy from the bookshop and they will be signed. So it's at the bottom like um, Molly was pointing at. So we're just gonna chat with them today. Um, Molly has some questions for Cookie. And if you have questions, we would love to hear from you. Um, please just at, use the ask a question button, which is also at the bottom of the screen. Or you can just type them in the chat window. Either one's totally fine. Um, we've already heard from lovely Stephanie in the chat there. Thank you for interacting with us before the event. That was fun. Um, and I'm gonna give them a quick introduction and then we'll get started. So, um, Cookie O'Gorman writes stories filled with humor and heart for the nerd in all of us. Fiery first kisses, snappy dialogue, smart girls, swoon-worthy boys, and unbreakable friendships are featured in each of her books. Cookie is a hopeless romantic, a Harry Potter aficionado, and a supporter of all things dork. Chocolate, Chinese food, and Asian dramas are her kryptonite. Above all, she believes that real life has enough sorrow and despair, which is why she always tries to give her characters a happy ending. She is the author of Adorkable, Ninja Girl, The Unbelievable, Inconceivable, Unforeseeable Truth About Ethan Wilder, and The Good Girl's Guide to Being Bad. Whether it's to talk about her books or just a fangirl, Cookie would love to hear from you. And I'm going to put her website in the chat in just a minute so you guys can reach out to her if you'd like. Um, and Molly E. Lee, our wonderful in conversation partner, writes adult and young adult contemporary featuring strong female heroines who are unafraid to challenge their male counterparts, yet still vulnerable enough to have love sneak up on them. In addition to being a military spouse and mother of two, plus one stubborn English bulldog, Molly loves hiking, enjoying the outdoors around her mountain home, and digging for treasure in antique stores. She is the author of Ask Me Anything, the Grad Night series, and the Love on the Edge series. And I hope you check out Molly's book. So thanks so much both of you for joining us and everyone in the audience who's here and we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you for having Thank us. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm so excited to be here with you, Cookie. This is such a fun, fun time. You just released Cupcake, uh, what, seven days ago? Yes. So I bet it's been a really a super fun week. week. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love seeing all the cool Instagram shots with the cupcakes. That was such a cool idea. And I, I love seeing all those. They're so just a happy, bright spot on Instagram this week. Yeah, right. <laughs> they did so awesome too with that. And I was just like, oh. and it made me really hungry. So, <laughs> yes. Oh, I know. Every time I'm like, I need a cupcake, which is just why we're here, right? This book is just, it's so much fun. I'm so excited to talk to you about it. I have to say that. That first line about which Avenger would you be with? I mean, it had me hooked. I'm so pumped about that. I feel like it just called to my nerd girl heart. So I just love that. Um, I would love to kick it off, off with the first question to bring it all in for us. What inspired you to write this awesome, ridiculously fun book? Oh, yeah. Well, OK, so what inspired me to write Cupcake first was um, my editor asked me if I wanted to do own voices. So I immediately thought of like, uh, okay, so that's underrepresented communities. So what could I write that would be underrepresented that I thought I could relate to and write okay? And I thought plus size. So I wanted to write a plus size princess. And then um, it pretty much grew from there. And then the other big inspiration was, um, it's actually a 90s movie called Angus. Um, it's like a cult classic kind of movie. But anyway, the, um, the boy in it was like, um, not nominated for homecoming and he was overweight and it was as a joke um so it's kind of like a gender swap on that a little bit plus it's more um like uh positive like happy it's a happy one so it's not a downer at all although angus is not a downer either it's awesome so i'm not like <laughs> i love that movie <laughs> i'll have to anyway. i'll just check that out that sounds awesome but no that's not that's a great that's a great um the representation is definitely called for and i think you handled it so incredibly well like it was just it's just it's so effortless and we were that's one of my questions was how important was it for you to make this a body positive story 
because it's so needed in the market right now. And it, it was just such a, like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Um, I, I definitely agree that it's needed right now. I, I, I teach like um, young girls, I teach dance too, and I teach teenagers. And I think I just want them to have really good self-esteem and to love themselves. And so as far as representation in books, I think that there are, whenever I tried to think about plus size characters, I couldn't think of a lot of them, but the ones that I did think about kind of always had to lose weight before they got to happily ever after, or they kind of didn't like their bodies. So that was just something that I wanted to write differently. I, I think that Ariel, I really, really, really wanted her to be confident in herself and past that point of maybe the self-doubt, not, not that it wasn't there, um, but she's, she's at a good place and she, she really loves herself. And I, I hope that people could see that like, and then be like that because she, again, there are moments of self-doubt in the book for sure, where she kind of goes back and forth, you know, progress isn't just, I am great all the time, but <laughs> I, I like, I really loved writing her that way. And I wanted to give her a happily ever after and a fun, happy um, story and definitely not a sad one. So. Yeah, no, that definitely that definitely comes across on the page. And like I said, it's a just a wonderful the confidence and also paired with the very relatable, like every especially with women, we all have self doubt over a million different things at any given time. But her personality was just so like, awesome and just pops off the page. So that was really, really well done. And you definitely, definitely hit the nail on the head on that one. I loved seeing that it was such a, it just felt good. It was a story that was needed, you know, and that was just like, yeah, she's just great. And that's who she is. And I just love that. I, I love that about her character. That's awesome. I hope it is. Like so, up. I love her too. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Oh yeah, no, it's a happiness. It's just like I said, like a bright spot in this, you know, and there's a, mi a million amazing books out there, but it was just such a bright light. And I just loved Ariel's character. And that's one thing I was going to ask you with my questions because of the whole princess theme. Who was your favorite Disney princess? Okay, so like a hundred percent Ariel. Okay. <laughs> it's like I, okay. I think it should be. I like, was wondering. <laughs> yeah. So that was like in my youth for sure. And like again, if I don't really think about it, I think Ariel. But then I'm like, I should be really attracted to Belle because she was the reader, right? She loved books. But I don't know why. I just love Ariel for some reason. I love her. I love the music in that one too. But I love her. So oh yeah. It's great music. No, what that's that's you? awesome. No. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite princess? Oh man, I probably switch it up every every time they come out with a new princess. Like I, I super, I love Moana, but she's a new age princess. My old school princess was always Belle, but that's just because I was a book nerd and there was like no other book nerds around me at the time. So I was like, okay, this works, but you know, she has to deal with the beast, but she gets a library. So we're okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that was one of them. Um, Oh, Stephanie said, it would have made getting through high school having cupcakes story. She's such an inspiration. That right there is totally why you do it, right? Like that's, yeah, that's, that's so great. So and high wonderful. school high school readers are getting this book. And I think it's just, it's such a great, great inspiration. So yes, right on the money, Stephanie. <laughs> okay, let's see. I have some more questions. Was it important to touch on bullying topics for you in this story? Yeah, for sure. Um, yes, because bullies are out there. So they had to be in there a little bit and I had to talk about it, but I definitely didn't want them to overtake the story, which I think happens sometimes. So it's Ariel's story, not the bully story. And I wanted her to like rise up above it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it definitely was important to me, I think. And also it wasn't just Ariel. Um, actually, yeah, um, some of my other characters in the book are, are bullied also. So I think that's just life. Funnily enough, the bullies in the book are actually like in-person bullies, not internet bullies, which I think internet bullies are a lot right now. There's a lot. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I didn't even touch on that part, but, um, but yeah. No, that's a whole other wormhole right there. The internet trolls. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> so. Yeah. And it, it yeah. does add this very authentic layer to the, you know, the high school life. And it's just something that unfortunately is hard to get away from but I love that Ariel's confidence and her positivity just kind of quashes it like you don't even you know it doesn't you're like you said it doesn't ever take the story so that is that's just it was really well done yeah and that was a really that was an intentional choice to have her not be just just not to let them have that power over her you know so 
yeah I like that about her too I wish I was more like that sometimes (laughs) I know right and having these characters though these accessible characters in young adult literature is what it's all about because you can you know you adapt pieces of your favorite character's personality so these young kids who are in high school right now reading cupcake it's just it's such a wonderful piece of personality to take with you like Ariel is just she's just a queen and I love it yeah (laughs) Let's see. Seeing Lana bullied by her own mom was also eye-opening. I just found where that chat is. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm like new on this mobile, but yes, I 100% agree with that, Stephanie. Like that part was definitely an important part to put in so that we can understand Lana better. The quote-unquote mean girl who's not really a mean girl, you know, she's just, you know, a girl finding her way. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I definitely like writing that part too, because it was one of those things where it's like a hidden um, bully relationship kind of like where it's like a family member, you know, um, and it's total contrast to like Cupcake's mom, like to Ariel's mom and her who have this, this wonderful relationship, um, which is one of my favorite parts of the whole book. The female relationships in this book are like some of my favorite parts. Anyway, I love reading. I love like the male too. I love I love the chemistry, but like I love the female, you know, stuff. But yeah. I'm yeah. I'm glad that that spoke to you about Lana's mom and about Ariel's mom. I, I thought that their contrast between those two was really um fun for me to write. And then also like you said, eye opening a little bit about what some people have to deal with. So yeah, absolutely. So did you take inspiration from your own relationship with your mom with Ariel's Ariel's relationship? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, like, yeah. um, not at all from Lana's mom, but like, yes, from Ariel's mom. No, 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 that's what I meant from Ariel's mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I have like, I, I have a great mom and then awesome aunts, you know, that I was raised by. Um, so and a great grandmother, too. So I, I mean, like, and good men, too. But like, my women in my family are very strong and like, supportive and awesome. And yeah so definitely got that from or put that in the book yeah that's yeah that's definitely not surprising to hear since there's such great female relationships in this book it comes across very effortless and very authentic so that's just that's awesome that you were able to kind of draw from that and put that in there so that's just very very cool um are you a baker are you a baker okay (laughs) so that would be a big no um (laughs) but that's what i was gonna say if you asked me like how I was like Ariel or something, I was going to say she loves to bake and I love to eat. I don't know. But like, yeah, so I'm not a baker. I can make like maybe three things well and, and I'm not like her at all. However, I love watching those baking shows. So I don't know. Yes. Those things are so easy to get hooked on, you know, and then you're like, oh, I could do that. And there's like no way I could ever do that. (laughs) I can keep watching them like over and over and over again too, like a like a whole series or whatever, a whole season of that. So anyway, but yeah, I don't bake, but I I do appreciate how much goes into that. And I don't know that it's really an art form or it can be so. Definitely, definitely. That definitely came across in her character. Do you have like a favorite like treat though that you like? What's like? What would you prefer if you were gonna? If you had like a cupcake, a brownie, and a cookie, which one would you reach for first? Because your book's called Cupcake, but that doesn't mean that's your favorite. <laughs> which yeah. one would you reach for? <laughs> um, Is that- I guess it would probably depend on the day. I don't know. Molly, are you still there? Sorry. Hey. Hey. Molly popped off for just a second. I'm not sure what oh, happened. Okay. Wait, I'll keep an eye on her. It just says it's waiting for her to reconnect. So she must be having some kind of internet issues. <laughs> Sorry about that. I saw like my big head was like, and I was like, oh, where'd Molly go? <laughs> she's, I think she's back online. Let me see if I can okay. get her back on. I was watching. I was like, oh, somebody's having computer issues. <laughs> This is a great conversation so far. I've really been enjoying it. Oh, yeah. um, and it looks like the audience is super engaged, too. I love it. I'm so <laughs> sorry. Okay, you I'm can. sorry. My internet is the worst. I apologize. I'm sorry. So I missed it because my internet cut you out. But what is your favorite treat? <laughs> <laughs> I need to know for my own personal reasons. <laughs> I, I think so. It was cupcake, brownie, or cookie, right? Right. I mean, you know, just the basics. <laughs> I'd probably go cookie 
I would probably go with like a chocolate chip cookie, classic chocolate chip cookie. But if it was like special occasion or something, maybe brownie or cupcake. So how about you? Ooh, fun. So did you, you had, you did have cupcakes on release day, right? Like you had to have, right? Oh yeah. I made some for, um, the yes. kids that I teach too. it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> So oh, that's make, a fun I can, celebration. I can, I, can a, I can make a pretty good cake. Like, um, the recipe's actually in the back of the book for like a chocolate cake. Oh my gosh, who's that? Sorry, that was my dog, Loxley. Oh. Sorry, she's a, she's giant. She just stormed in the door. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I love dogs. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I love dogs. She, she's giant. She's an Irish wolfhound and she's still a puppy, so she's still learning boundaries. <laughs> oh, so cute. Oh Do you have gosh. a dog? Um, two. Well, my mom does, and I consider them mine as well. So we have two dogs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice! That's awesome. Dogs. Yes. Uh, yes. And they I have love that as well. So, oh. and they're usually shit suits. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, that's awesome! No, that's great. I love dogs. I, I have an English bulldog as well. So it's really funny seeing the short, short one and the tall one together, and the mm -hmm. the short one totally, you know, is an alpha to the big one. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um hey so yeah if you could describe cupcake in a tweet did we find that if you could describe it in a tweet what would you say i thought i had it up let me see oh my god oh no <laughs> i know i know i just honestly i had to do this somebody else asked about this and i had done it but i don't really go on twitter very much um yeah so it's kind of a hard ah, place okay. to be sometimes <laughs> okay i got it don't count the characters because i don't know if it would okay. actually fit in a tweet but, um, All right. okay, so Cupcake is a swoon-worthy, body-positive YA romance about a plus-size princess, an imperfect prince, and a refreshing tale of homecoming that reminds everyone to love yourself at any size. So yeah. That is, like, perfect. I tried. That you nailed it. Like said, that is awesome. That's always the hardest thing to do is take this amazing work you've just created and short it down to just a few words, and you just nailed it. So that was really well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always so hard, right? So for all the uh, any would-be writers that are going to be watching this, you oh, just gosh. nailed that. It probably, I mean, it takes me hours to do that. I don't know how long it took you to do that. But do you have any, like, solid advice for writers just trying to break into the business for a young adult? Any tips and tricks? Um, well, I would say uh, first, like, develop some thick skin. <laughs> especially if you're going to try to go the traditional route and like query, but also write a book that you love. Like you probably always hear that, but write a book that you love and just believe in it. Other people say like deter you, I guess, like finish your book. That would be one of my things. Cause I think my first one that I ever wrote took like over three years. It was never published. It was a YA paranormal. I still love it. But anyway, um, well, I mean, paranormal's coming back, Cookie. Maybe yeah, you need to dig paranormal. that out of the drawer. I don't usually, I don't publish <laughs> in that, but like I, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I would say that, but I would also say like, um, uh, can you hear me? Oh, no. Okay. I can see you. We got you. Okay. We got you. <laughs> but yeah, I would definitely say um, just keep writing and don't let anybody oh, tell you that you can't do it. Um, I know that... Uh, I, I love Cupcake, and it's traditionally published by Entangled Teen, and I love them, and I'm so glad that they gave me that opportunity. It's my first ever um, traditionally published book. But before that, I had eight books. So they've been self-published, and I love them just as much, and I love Cupcake! So I, I just, I want writers to know that they have a way, you know, if you want to get your work out there, you can do it. And you can hire an editor, you can hire, like, um, cover design, you can, you can do all of that. Anyway, so whichever path that you take, both are valid. That is such a wonderful, wonderful message. And it's so true. Like, I love that you just kicked it off with have a thick skin because that is one of the first things I always tell anybody who ever asks me anything about this business is because it doesn't matter because you're going to have to have a thick skin when you're, if you're querying or if you hire an editor, that editor is still going to, if she's a good editor, he or she is a good editor, they're going to tell you exactly what you probably don't want to hear, <laughs> but it's going to help sharpen your book. So you're going to need to, you know, adjust to that and, you know, make sure that you can, just handle anything that's thrown with you. And that's something that, that I know a lot of people struggle with, but it is so worth it in the end because we get these great stories and these great characters like Ariel, who's just going to, I bet, impact so many young 
females, you know, in high school that need this boost of positivity and to just own who they are in their own skin. And I just, I love that message and that's why you do it. So <laughs> that's really, that's a great advice. So I would totally follow that. Anybody who's watching who wants to get into to writing, just, just keep writing and don't let anybody tell you different. You said it very well. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, here's a fun one. Do you believe in happily ever after? I have a feeling I know this, but I want to hear you say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Um, yeah, I definitely do believe in happily ever after for sure. Um, I think it looks different for everybody. So your happily ever after might be the, not be the same as somebody else's. But um, yeah, I definitely believe in that. There's a little cynical part. Okay, so I'm a hopeless romantic and I write romance. <laughs> so I love, I love that and happily ever after. But I also have like, in one of my books, I wrote something like, um, some people uh, never get their happily ever after. They just have to settle for happy but missing something. So I know that sounds really sad. However, <laughs> that was stated in the beginning of the book, not this one, but a different one. Anyway, and I so I there is a happily ever after. Just saying. So anyway, but yes, I do. What about you, Mom? I love that though. Oh, I totally do. I'm like that hopeless romantic as well. I, I, I absolutely. I fall head over heels for that. I love, and I always, and I, I know it's coming, but I always love the struggle and the, the things that you learn while you're on your journey. And I also love how you mentioned like, not everybody's happily ever after looks the same. And even if you got to the end of the story and all you did was recognize your own self worth, I mean that is huge. And I think that's a that's a great ending too as well. So I think I love that you said there's all different kinds, and I think that's something that's really wonderful in great books that are written. Is is you can. You can have a hundred million different happily ever afters through reading. So I love that. Um, I love that a lot. <laughs> so what's a typical writing day look like for you? Like what do you have a routine or you just kind of come like come and go when it, you know, the passion hits you or. Um, probably the second. So probably like come and go, but I tried, I have tried, I've tried so hard. I get hit like by writer's block and then I can't like, force myself to write but um usually on a good day I can hit like 2,000 words and then um I'll divide it up into like two different uh times that I write so I'll write like in the um like afternoon and then I'll write at night I used to only write at night and I used to think that was my time and I was just like okay I'm gonna stay up until I get this down. but then I tried writing in the um the middle of the day and it actually worked okay so I don't know. I always say try new things for any writers out there. Try try different things and see how it works for you. Like um, anyway, but that's pretty much mine. I know that that's probably not the best way to do it, but yeah. No, it, there is no it. right way. There's no right way to do it. I think we all have different different ways to do things, and I think it could change with every book too, right? Like it depends. Like yes. if you have a crushing deadline from a traditional publisher, or if you have a little bit more leeway if you're self publishing, right? As a hybrid author, have you? felt the differences in that a hundred percent yes 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 <laughs> i'm so sorry <laughs> but it's true if you're only accountable to yourself you can push that deadline back a bit so coming into this situation again this is my first traditionally published one um so i was working with the editor she's amazing by the way her name is stacy anyway um but yeah she was really nice to me and understanding that i I tried so hard to meet my deadline and then I had, I needed a few more days or like a few more weeks to be honest, but like she was really nice about it. So, um, but yeah, I do see that there's a difference and yes. Um, so books, he said, writer's block is so painful. Yes, it is. And it's a real thing. Yes, it is. I don't care what people say. If you try to force yourself, I feel like at some point you do have to just sit down and write, but like if you try to force it, sometimes it just will not come because I've had that. I could sit here for hours and just oh, for like, sure. <laughs> just staring at that Word document and just like zoning yeah. off for sure. Like mm -hmm. forcing it is probably the worst thing you can do. There's a difference between hey, get your butt in the chair and write versus I'm sitting here for an hour and nothing is coming out. You're just hitting a wall. That is writer's block, and that's the time to take a step away because you're not going to get anything out of it anyway. So do you have a cure? Do you have like a special thing you do when you get writer's block? I wish I knew the cure, but um, I think what you just said I, I think about only... stepping away, <laughs> taking like a few minutes, like in doing something else and then coming back to it. 
I think that can like fill your tank like and make you want to write more like whether that's just sitting down and watching like a episode of Shit's Creek or something I don't know but like you know doing something else hanging with your dog <laughs> like yeah <laughs> yeah so reading a book I've whatever. done that before I'm like what do you think about this plot line to the dog at 3 a.m and <laughs> she's looking at me like I'm crazy <laughs> But okay. yes, I so the the difference between the traditional and the self publishing, I I totally know how you feel, and I've I've worked with Stacy for years. She's amazing. I love her. So she's like hitting the lottery with editors. So it's awesome. I, I can totally tell she was with you on this one because she's always got this positive energy about her. So that's yeah. awesome that you got her. And yeah, I, I bet it's different. <laughs> also, yeah, about from self publishing. If if you are gonna like if anybody is self publishing or whatever, I just wanted to say that's just me. I push back my deadlines, but some self-publishers are like really on top of it and they have a very um, stringent like schedule that they follow. So that's just me. I'm not trying to say that it's easier if you self-publish like in that because some people are really- No, bad. everybody's going to be like, uh, Cookie said it was okay. So I'm pushing this back. <laughs> no, don't listen to me. <laughs> yes. We're all going to say it. We're all going to say it. No, it's good. It's good to have that power, you know, and to be able to recognize, you know, I need a couple more weeks. And usually the editors at the houses do kind of try to work with you. So that's good that you were able to get that extra time. And it's a fantastic book. So it shows. And she made the right call by giving you the extra time. Actually, no. Okay. So it's I, just I, I made the deadline on this one. I made the deadline on this one. Oh, nice. It oh, good. Another it's another one. Oh, is it a it's new a one in the works? Yeah. Secret project? I guess. Can we can we talk about it? Is it what is it gonna be um YA romance? It is YA romance. Um, okay. Is yeah, it an entangled team line? It or not. I'm nervous. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I will take the pressure off, but we will be excited to see that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I do have a question from somebody in our audience named Kyla. What was the line, character, or scene that came to you first for Cupcake? How did it manifest? Ooh, that's hard a little bit. Um, wow, that's a really good question. <laughs> um, I'm not sure. I think the, the character who came first was definitely Ariel, who came into my head first. Um, I just kind of, with her, I just knew who she was somehow, and like, I, I felt a real kinship to her. So I, I, I enjoyed writing her a lot. I wish I was as kind and sweet as she is. And like, just, yeah, anyway. Um, but then <laughs> I, I don't, honestly, I don't know which line or, but I have some favorite lines in there. I, I mean, I definitely love the part about her, like she and Tony, who is her best friend in the book, they have this conversation about why aren't there any fat princesses? basically talking about Disney princesses. Like, why aren't there any fat princesses? There's this, like, I don't understand. <laughs> like, and I don't understand, <laughs> like, but whatever. Um, and at the end she says, screw that, love yourself at any size. That's how it, how the conversation ends. So the love yourself at any size was a big, like, beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. And anybody that's telling you differently is trying to sell you something, period. Right, anyway, so. right, preach. That is so true. You're so you're so on point with that. I love that line too, by the way. It's such a it embodies the entire story and right. her character. Yeah. And she is she is so incredibly kind and so like she just has the zen about her. I just I absolutely adore her. So that's 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 really awesome. I was gonna segue that into asking you. It sounds like she came to you very naturally, but did you ever struggle with her voice at all or did it just spill onto the page easily? Because I know uh, different characters can give you a harder time. I, um, she came pretty easily, I think. Um, but the one that I did struggle with was Reese a little bit, <laughs> to be honest with you. Reese was a little bit harder. Um, but yeah, Tony, uh, Ariel seemed like, I, I feel like I got her pretty good. Like I was, and her and Tony and everything was like, you know, Reese was a little bit harder cause I didn't want him to be, I didn't want him to be like loquacious and like really talkative and just again, like just popular and really comfortable with everybody. Like he, and I didn't want him to be a jerk either. So it was hard to thread like that needle because like he can come off as like rude sometimes, but it's not intentional. Like it's just because he's quiet. So <laughs> um, yeah. And I think the quarterback character, 
uh, is pretty established, but he's usually either just really fluffy and just fun and just kind of, I have no cares in the world, or he's like a jerk, like an a-hole, like in Angus. Anyway, so if you go watch Angus, Molly, you'll see. Um, so there's I'm going to have to now. <laughs> Yeah, there's that character in that yeah, one. Yeah, I like that. It was a he was very complex. He's played by that guy, um, what's his name? That Vanderbeek, uh the guy from Dawson's Creek. Anyway, he played a really good jerk. Oh yeah, I don't he Oh, I bet. Movie. I bet. So anyway, I'll have I did to go watch it. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, and funny. that was he definitely accomplished. He seems very he had more um levels, more layers to him than the typical, you know, cookie cutter quarterback. So yeah, that's awesome. So did, was there any kind of um, magic that you did when you were pulling out his voice? Did you like go and like listen to other guys or were you just you're just drawing from the what you already knew that well, you Stacey wanted him to be? Stacy helped me a lot with that because like I guess at first he was a little <laughs> too perfect, you know. Um, so we tried to, yeah, we tried to give him more like and I, I think it really helped because like. I OK, so on the one hand, I think people don't give teen boys enough credit like they can be thoughtful and they can be nice and sweet i think that if we've set the bar really low i mean you know like it's just really low but um but yeah so, absolutely and other, yeah and on the other hand like um they don't have to always have the exact right thing to say all the time and you know they don't have to be like um perfect again like not make mistakes they can make mistakes too so anyway but she really oh, helped for me sure find that balance kind of with that character so yeah i love that because it's it's so absolutely true and realistic that none of these teenagers have their stuff together as sometimes uh, media can portray them to be like none of them like the more often than not people are struggling and they're trying to find their place and they're trying to figure out where their tribe is so yeah that was that was super authentic and that was really well done so that's that's really good thank you so I have this, um, was there anything different about writing, your writing process for this book versus Adorkable? Um, okay, so Adorkable, yeah. That one uh, is probably the easiest book that I've ever written. It came to me like just in a day, I wrote down the outline and then I wrote it in, I think it was like literally like four months. So that one was good. That is like, awesome. For, for me, for me, that's, that's fast. Um, so that, that was really, that one just, it was so, um, I don't know what you call it, but like um, natural and organic kind of com coming from that. And then in this one, it was also, you know, natural and everything. Like I said, I knew who Ariel was like immediately, but I, I felt a little bit, um, I felt a little bit of pressure because like I knew it was going to be on voices and I wanted to represent like um, plus size people well. And I, I really didn't want it to be um, a downer. I really didn't want it. I think a lot of stories about plus size people seriously like fall down like that rabbit hole of like letting that overtake the story. So, I mean, and then I didn't want to leave that out either because it had to be in there, you know, I mean, like there had to be some conflict, some self doubt. So, but yeah, so that was a little bit different in this one. I've never done a book where I actually thought, okay, I want to put this message across <laughs> and not be preachy. <laughs> so, right. um, but yeah, so that was a little it, bit different. It's an this. incredibly hard challenge to take on, but I mean, I think you nailed it, man. Like I thought that pressure really helped because it, you're so right. There's so many stories that are like, the, you know, the makeover stories. And it's like, that was not needed. This is just about her being fantastic and owning it. And I think you just, you did so wonderful with that. And, but I can see how like that would put more, there's always pressure when you're, you actually do have something to convey. There's always more pressure and there's always, and especially in young adult where you have to be so authentic or the, the, they'll call you out in two seconds. So I just, I think you did so wonderful with that. And I think it's just going to make a lot of a lot of young readers so happy. So yeah, bravo think, on that one. I think, so <laughs> I think like it was also hard just a little bit to not. Well, I guess people will probably look at the book and think, oh, cliche. It's just like, normal. no, it's not. Think about like all your favorite romances and think if first of all, think if there's any plus size characters as that main girl. And then secondly, like 
think about like the again the female relationships I think are what really put it make it different I just I wanted them to be supportive of each other even though homecoming was going to be like a competitive environment so and then she has a supportive mother and a supportive best friend and again spoiler but like um her and Lana like come to an understanding and they just you know they kind of bond so I love that part I actually love Lana I just be completely honest anyway so I love that. And I love how you like pulled the curtain back too. I think that's something that doesn't get done very often with these so-called mean girls. Like, again, there's so many things where like, especially with women, we're always just, we're always analytical and we're always self-doubting and there's a million things. And each one of us is trying to go on our journey. And I wish if, so, if more of us understood that and tried to look behind the curtain, like you did, we'd probably be a lot more chill, <laughs> you know? Thank so you. it was just really well done. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I, I love it. It's not cliche at all. Nobody, nobody better be saying this is a cliche. It is a breath of fresh air is what it is. And it's fantastic. So I will say that. <laughs> um, we do have another, another question in our box. Uh, what is your favorite character from one of your books? Always the hardest question to answer. Oh my God. I know it's not fair. It's not fair. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. <laughs> from like any of the books? Like or oh my god it says any of your books any of your books and then you have to tell us why even though it's impossible to choose but we're gonna yeah. make you there's oh <laughs> i can't do it oh i can't do that <laughs> anyway like, oh, i'm so sorry i cannot do that I, who asked that question <laughs> i love them all look see mystic <laughs> I know it's so hard. It's like asking to choose your favorite child. It's incredibly hard to do. Um, well, we can all be team Ariel right now because she is in the forefront of our minds and she's just this bright light. So let's, I'll, I'll say team Ariel over here. <laughs> yeah. It's so hard. Like I would pick all my girls like that. I write, I would pick them to like be my best friends. And then all the guys that I write, I find like very attractive things about each one of them. So I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. We can, uh, you know, it's, it's it's an impossible question. It'd be like saying, pick your favorite book. If you had to keep one of your books, you know, I get those all the time. And I'm like, can I have you, no idea. Can I can't answer. I don't know how to do that. No. Do you have a favorite? No, <laughs> no, I can't. I can talk about other people's books for days, but I can't, right? I can't, yes. um, I can't ever choose, but that's always the question. It's always like, which one was your favorite? It's easier for me to say like, which one came onto the page easiest or which one was hardest to write, you know, um, yeah. Like, did, did you in the in Cupcake have any like unexpected characters, like those secondary characters that just like kicked in the page and are like, hey, I'm here, what's up? Did you have any of those? <laughs> I, I did. I, um, there's okay, so he doesn't get much like page time, but like, there's this guy named Xander, and I love him. I just love him. <laughs> he's so wonderful. I love it. Yeah, he's kind of like, um, he's paired with Lana, so. Anyway, I love him and I love her and I love their little dynamic. And if I could, I would like, I would have gone into that more. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh, maybe like a spinoff. You never know. That could be fun. I love those characters, though, that just like take you by surprise. So that's fun. They're always usually the most fun to write. <laughs> oh, yeah. I love them, too. They're a lot of fun to write, for sure. Stephanie, Stephanie says Xander was hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was so Yay, fun. I love that. <laughs> oh, what is the best response you've ever received from a reader? Hmm, that's a hard one too. Um, <laughs> so uh, I love it when people tell me um, that they can, if, if it's like a mother that she says that she can share it like with her daughter, you know, like that they've um, shared my books. I love that. Uh, which is one of the reasons why I love writing YA. Um, I just love that. Um, and I actually had somebody tell that. Because it does. It hits both yeah. markets. Yeah. I love that connection, too, so that they can yeah, talk yeah. about it. And um, But, yeah. So I love that. And then I love um, just in general hearing that it made somebody laugh or brighten their day, you know, and just made them glad. And let them escape for a second because that's why I read. I don't want to read. There's so much tragedy and awful things and terrible things in the world for real. And I just want to read to get away from that, <laughs> like just for a little while. So I love it when people tell me that that helped them there. And then for this specific book, I had just a couple times, but I, I've heard people say that it helped them feel seen. And I really, really, really appreciate like that. And I, I, that just touches me in like such a 
deep way anyway um but yeah i love that so yeah no that's 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 amazing and that's that's exactly what that's what you want to hear and that's why you do the late nights and you push through the writer's block and you go through the fights with the editor that's why you do it right is for those wonderful connections that you make with these readers and um, I don't know if you get this, but I'm always surprised when somebody's like, I'm so sorry that I'm bothering you on, you know, Instagram or Facebook or wherever you're most um, active. And I'm like, you will never bother me. Like, let's talk. Like, I love it when people reach out. I, I assume you're the same. Where where are you most oh, active so everybody watching can go, like, follow you and message you? <laughs> um, I'm mostly active on um I guess Facebook and Instagram, but I'm not big social media. Like if you message me like through my website or whatever, I'll answer that too. But I try to answer all of them. Um, so anywhere that you send me a message, I will try my best. But yeah, like you said, it's funny whenever people apologize and I'm just like, no, you're not bothering me at all. Like you just made my whole day. Anyway. So right? It just, my year. yes, it's just like it's a lift. I've had that's what's I love that about readers is like they I, I always want them to know how much of an impact they have on us and like we can be sitting at that word document staring at it and going what am I doing and then a reader messages and you're like oh this just yeah. made my entire year this this is why I'm doing this so I, I love that you said that and um do you read books with your mom like that with that connection do you guys do that my mom's actually because that's such a cool reader. connection yeah my mom doesn't <laughs> love but she reads my books I love her. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. That is awesome. I, I love that connection. It's such a cool thing that with young adult that they can they can touch both both sides. Like, you know, I mean I'm I'm a mom and I read I read YA and you know, I can't wait till my daughter's old enough that we can share that because it is it's just a, it's a cool connection. So I love that they're finding your books and, and sharing that and telling you about that. That's so awesome. And I also think that, you know, there there are like really good like you just said, I mean, like with a mother daughter, they can be like a really good relationship or a father son or a mother son, whatever. It doesn't always have to be like the absent parent or like that relationship where they're really butting heads, even though that is there too. So, but yeah, anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, you're good. You're just like, in an, I like it. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, I'm sorry. No, don't be sorry. This is, you know, virtual. I love these events because it does open up where so many people from across the globe can watch and but it's always like working out the technical issues but it is so awesome to be able to connect with readers in this way and they get to put a face to the book which i love and it, it, they love hearing what you have to say about the characters and everything so this is always just so much fun i love doing these oh are you a marvel nerd i have to ask this because that first line in your book is about avengers are you a marvel nerd isn't everybody yes yes i, I know am. well you never know <laughs> I, sometimes I'm like shocked when I run into people who don't get the references and I'm like, what? This is like my life. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, no, I love them. So who's your favorite? Them. Oh, can um, you pick, can you pick a favorite? <laughs> I love things about all of them, but I, I'm completely honest. I'm probably going to say Captain America, but that might be because I love Chris Evans too. So like, I just love like the, yeah, does it? I love the whole team. That man. I love that they're a team together too. The Avengers. Anyway. But yeah, for Marvel yeah. in general, wait a second, wait a second, is, okay, oh, I can't remember this, it's so awful. Is X-Men a part of Marvel, or is that DC? Yes. No, it's Marvel. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, so my 100%, <laughs> my favorite Marvel character is Rogue from the X-Men. Oh, yes. Oh, from that's a good one. Cartoon. Yeah, they just, they... They the haven't crossed uh, those. They haven't crossed those worlds yet, but I feel like they're going to do that in the future with the X Men and the Avengers and all of that. And I cannot wait. There's so many doors opening do, in this oh Phase God. Four of Marvel that I'm just like, yes, I I'm like I'm here for it. I want. Yes. Yeah, I'm oh. so here for it. I love what I they're know. doing. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I do too. I love the one. Oh, well, I mean, I'm not. I'm here. Do you like X Men? Yes, I do. I didn't, okay, so for the, you know, the new ones with, like, James McAvoy and, like, the kind of, like, new um, generation or whatever, I love them and everything, but I love the old ones better, like, um, with Hugh yes. Jackman and, yeah, where they're, like, the age that they really were, like, anyway, I, I just really like those a lot. No, totally. I, I totally agree. And it's always hard to transition because it's, like, it's it was crazy because, you know, this is. I've been a nerd for so long and then like introducing my kids to it and now watching them get into a new phase is just like, it's blowing my mind. So oh, yeah. no, but I love it. And 
that's your yeah your first line totally totally hooked me just for that reason um oh jessica says sorry. sorry oh oh no sorry uh loki hands down i'm a diehard <laughs> loki fan i will die on that hill every day um <laughs> People, anybody who knows me knows how obsessed I am with Loki and his character, but uh, yeah, but I love Chris Evans too. And Jessica was saying that she is t team Chris Evans and team Captain America. I mean, like, how can you not like Chris Evans? He's just like, I love him. whatever, I mean, regardless of what it really happens, the persona he puts out there in the media is phenomenal. Like you just can't not love this man. And he can really act like yeah. in his other films. He's, he's a really good actor. He's got chops. Yes, I love him. Sorry. And I love Captain yes. America too. I think that he was the perfect um, one to like cast as him. He he really like, I totally bought that. Yeah. Anyway, I like. Oh him. yeah, that's I love that one. His and his whole arc is fantastic. Like it's the it's just great writing over there. They're just doing some really good writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, I am looking at all my questions. This one probably is really hard, and I was scared to ask it because I don't have an answer for it <laughs> for myself, but we're going to see if you do. Favorite 80s, 90s, and 2000 movie or band and why? Oh, my God. Okay, so let yeah, me Yeah, it's so hard. <laughs> I think I actually, okay. So for my favorite 80s movie, it is... Um, I just got to go with what I'm initially thinking. But, like, my favorite 80s movie is Some Kind of Wonderful. Um, I love that with Watts and Keith. Come on. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Yeah. And then for the 90s, I would either go um, Clueless or Never Been Kissed. Are we talking, like, we're talking about, like, romantic comedies, right? Or romantic, like, movies or? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Because if I can't, okay, if I can't narrow it down to that, then I'm like, whatever. But like, and then the 2000s, I love North and South, um, which is a BBC series because now I'm going away from the, like the teen, but like, I love Oh, that. I have to check that out. It's based on a book by Elizabeth I've heard about Thornton. that one. It's so good. John Thornton, Mr. Thornton. He's just wonderful. Ooh. Anyway, I love Oh, him. I have to, I have to go check yeah. that out now. That's Richard Armitage. Um, I don't know. Like he was in that, um, what is that? The Hobbit movies? He was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He was yeah. also in one of the Marvel movies, and I I can't remember if it was Captain America or what, but he he like ate a pill to like kill himself. It, it, the Red Skull. He was like one of the assassins oh. or something. Anyway. Right. Yeah, that might have been the first one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. Oh, that was totally I love. Tangent, but no, I, I love that. Stephanie says, "No wonder Ariel loved that show too." <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry. I yeah. I try to keep myself out of the books but sometimes they just sprinkles in there anyway oh no you don't need to apologize like oh i always i'm always sprinkling loki dust all over everything i write there's always at least one loki reference or i'll always have like like i'm super influenced by music when i'm writing i don't know you probably are too but like i'll if i get hooked on a new um band or artist i'm like a little sprinkle it in there because it's just it's a part of the writing journey. And so like, I just like to put it in there for fun. So don't apologize. <laughs> That's hard for me sometimes because of copyright, like um, putting the lyrics, you know, in books and stuff. Oh and yeah. So. But anyway, but sometimes I will mention like the bands and stuff, but yeah, I like that. Oh, Definitely. look, Molly. Oh, look. oh, the Jonas Brothers line in Shadow of Light was hilarious. <laughs> Loved it. Thank you. That one again, so my, um, my eight-year-old daughter is obsessed with that song right now. So it was just kind of on repeat in my head and uh, it just kind of came out and I was like, oh, this will be hilarious. And uh, I'm glad you liked it. So what thank song was you. It? it was Sucker. Oh, okay, um, yeah. The <laughs> very, the very broody, very broody, very um, dark character was like, I'm a sucker for you. And it just came out like totally not natural for him. So it was really, it was a fun uh, break the ice moment, yeah, that awesome. but I love, I, lo I love that. Do you, do you listen to playlists for each different book or do you have like, do you have a certain thing you go to to help you get in the, in the inspiration zone? Um, I, I make playlists for each of my books, but usually that's like, um, after the fact most of the time. Oh, nice. Um, and to get in the mood for them, I guess I, I don't know. I write down. Okay. So I guess this goes back to writing process, but I, I make little cards for myself and then I put the scenes on there and then I'll kind of lay them out in front of me. Just like literally like I'll cut a note card in half and then that'll be one like 
thing. But anyway, um, I don't Oh, know. I love that. Yeah, that helps That is me. super organized. That's totally on point. <laughs> uh, I love that. You so drop you the car just grab your card and be like, okay. And they're everywhere. <laughs> anyway. Your Sorry. dog runs in and like grabs yeah. it and takes off with it. You're like, well, now where was my character going? <laughs> right. That scene is gone forever. <laughs> I love that. Are your playlists up on your website so readers can find them and listen to them? I probably need to make them more searchable, but like um, they, they are there. They're just in like blog posts. I, I feel more comfortable blogging than okay. newslettering for the most part. So, but anyway. Oh, but that's yeah, awesome. I, I have posted them. I think I stopped at like a certain book though. And I don't know why, like I have the playlist. I don't know why they're not up there, but like there's at least four or five in the back of cupcake. Um, the book playlist is back there. And apparently Entangled oh, Teen nice. also made a homecoming playlist, which I thought was so cool. And now I want to hear that playlist. I think. You oh, well, we need to go book. listen to that. That's awesome. Yeah. It's on Spotify. Like, and you have to like get the barcode or something. It's not the same as the book playlist. So oh. I, I want to know what's in that playlist. Anyway. I'm excited for that. That's awesome. I um I just heard you guys talking about that, and I found it in the back of this book and recipes. Yeah, recipes. So it's, the playlist is on the back page there. <laughs> Sorry, I had to like share that. And then there's the entangled team on the very back. Um, oh, it's that like, there. Okay. Oh, I love that. Yeah, how to go, how to go find the. the oh, I'm gonna have to go. Oh my god. I have the book too. And I'm like, that's awesome. <laughs> I don't have the paperback yet. Mine's still in the mail. So that's awesome. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Yes. I'm so excited. Sorry. And um, the recipes are for the cake and frosting and cupcakes. Yep. So are awesome. these your recipes? Um, actually, the black joe cake was my Mima's recipe. And that's my favorite cake of all time. I love that cake. But yeah. That's so sweet. I love, I love that. that. That's love so that. awesome. Yeah, that's what we make for like birthdays. And that's what we make. So. Um, I think there's a cookie one too. Yeah, there's cookies. Yes. <laughs> I'm gonna make those later. Getting all kinds of bonuses in this book. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just really enjoyed listening to you guys chat, and I loved the like Marvel character offshoot because I'm also a fan. So. Oh. <laughs> we were both like oh, that one. <laughs> Yes, I love um, that. Your favorite, Jackie? Who are in um, I have. I was enjoying the X Men conversation because I like the original X Men movies a lot. So that was really fun. Um, good. and I think Margot was agreeing with me about that one. Cool. <laughs> nice. Um, I just wanted to check in. We're like getting close to the hour there. Um, do you guys have anything you want to close up with, or anything like that? I didn't want to interrupt because we just been enjoying listening but i i, I have gotten that. all the questions from the book or from the box so if anybody else has any questions get them in now okay. <laughs> i'm just glad that we survived this thank you so much this incredible <laughs> yeah um, you're just a delight and i'm just you know, sorry about my internet problems, but you are just so much fun to talk to. I could probably sit here and just talk Marvel and books with you all night. So, <laughs> yes, I could definitely talk about Marvel and yeah, books. Not mine necessarily, but like I could talk about those things. I could talk about yours. <laughs> well, your questions are fantastic, Molly, and um, Cookie. Your though your answer was just very like um, comprehensive, and you covered everyone's questions. And I feel like the audience is just super engaged. And um, Stephanie and Jessica were chatting with us. That was really fun. Um, so yeah, we had some really great questions and really glad to have you. Um, and I hope that your book continues to do well and that you do lots more events. Um, and I hope that someday we can have you for in person. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. That would be really fun. Definitely. But everybody get a signed to... copy of her book. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm going to show off your gorgeous um, cover. And book plate again, which matched the cover. And this one says, "Love yourself at any size with a heart and her signature." So please get one. <laughs> and enjoy I love that. And That's so awesome. And cook your recipes in the back. Enjoy some cake. <laughs> yes, please make the cake. Treat yourself. Okay. <laughs> yes. I love it. Definitely. <laughs> 
Well, thank you again, guys. And um, I guess I'll say good night. And I hope everyone reads yeah. your book, enjoys it, and found this really helpful. And remember, um, Cookie would love for you to contact her. So I put her website in there. Um, and she has like the playlist and everything on her website. I put Molly's website too, if you are Molly's fan and want to get in touch with her. So um, we hope you'll stay in touch. And thank you again. Thank you so much, Jackie. Yeah, thank you so much for having us. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you Hub City Bookshop. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right, have a good night, you guys. You too. Thanks. Bye. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.